All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit subscribe here on YouTube. So today we are in Python. We're using Python, Jupyter Notebooks uh, specifically. So from this video, you will learn three things. You'll learn how to do three things in Python. We're going to read a CSV into a pandas data frame object. We're going to create a bar chart plot and we're going to save the plot as a file. And so this is the file um, that we are going to create in this uh, in this lesson here. So you can see I've got a number of blocks by NBA team uh, in the 2018-2019 season. I've got my teams on the x-axis here and number of blocks on the y-axis. And this is a file. You can put this in the PowerPoint, uh, you know, use it wherever. So this is what we are going to create. And so let's just uh, show you Jupyter Notebooks here. And as you can see, there are a number of uh, packages that we are going to use in, uh, in Python here. So we're going to import pandas. Uh, as PD. So Pandas is, is the killer app, so to speak, for data preparation, reading, writing data, slicing the data, data wrangling. Uh, we've got matplotlib here. Matplotlib is our visualization or plotting library. And then pyplot is a, uh, it's a collection of functions that enable changes to a figure. So think of a figure as a canvas. And within that canvas, I can put multiple plots or I can put one plot. Uh, in this video, we're just gonna use one plot. And then OS is a module that enables the use of operating system functionality. So in this first cell here, you can see uh, all I'm doing is I'm changing the default directory to where my CSV file is located. So you can use the os.chdir. Uh, function and then um, uh, I can show print current directory and OS dot get uh, current directory here so if I say if I run this right you can see my current directory is you know, what I described it as here so now let's read in our um, our CSV file into a data frame so let's take a quick look at our CSV file you can see that I've got a column with team names here and I've got multiple columns with different statistics, NBA statistics, games, minutes played, uh, uh, field goals, field goals attempted, so on and so forth. But we are going to um, uh, visualize the blocks measure here in this CSV file. So I just wanted to show you that so you know what we are working with. So, so I'm going to create a data frame. And we're going to say data frame equal PD dot read csv great function here and the name of my file is nba team stats dot csv and we're going to i'm going to add this here i'll explain it here in a second index call equal zero so um, this is the name of my CSV file, and this index call equals zero. Uh, you can set one of your columns to be the index in the data frame. What that means is its values will be used as row labels. So basically, um, we're going to use these values as the x, um, the x labels, the labels on the x-axis, I should say, in our visualization, right? So we're telling um, uh, our data frame that we want to read use the read csv function and we're going to read in that file and the first and the index is going to be the team name okay so let's take a look at let's do this let's do print data frame head five but i just want to take a look and make sure that it does import correctly so if i go um if we run this you can see that it does indeed import correctly. I've got my teams and I'm showing the first five uh, uh, rows there. I've got my statistics and I have my blocks here. So that's, that is perfect. So we know that that works, right? And so what are we gonna do next? Let's do this. We're gonna create a figure and an axis equal to plt dot subplots. Right now, we're only going to have so again, what I said about figure and axes um, a figure is like your canvas, and your axes are subdivisions within that figure, right? And each axis consists of one or more um, individual 
uh, axes like an x-axis or a y-axis right and so we're going to define that and then I'm going to let's say ax on our axes dot bar right we want a bar chart and then what are we going to pass into that bar chart we're going to pass in data frame dot index again it takes an x um, and an x value which is our index which we said was team name and we need something to plot on the y-axis so our data frame or I could use df I should have defined it that way but that's fine I want to be explicit so blk was the name of our field so now if I were to do plt dot show this is not gonna be pretty but you know this is what we're working with so far you can see we have a bar chart but uh, you know we got some uh, we got a situation here on the x-axis um, but it looks like it's it's plotting our our blocks uh, correctly so how do we remedy this um, so what we're gonna do now I'm gonna say ax um, well first of all let's do this let's sort our values I can say um, before I show all right let's back up here I can say data frame equal data frame dot sort values right I want to sort these values so we're gonna what do we want to sort we want to sort BLK column and let's say ascending equal false all right so let's see what that does for us if I were to run this great so now we at least have our data in a, uh, a somewhat coherent sort so now we got to take care of this situation down here all right so what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, set x tick labels um, function here to bring some order to this uh, this jumbled chaos down here so so let's do this um, we're setting the index um, let's go ahead before we do a plt dot show we're gonna do ax dot set x tick labels uh, we're going to pass it our data frame dot index which controls or which uh, holds our team names I should say we're going to use this rotation let's say rotation equal 90 for now we can change that if we need to uh, horizontal alignment is equal to right and then we could throw a uh, font size equal let's say 12 and let's see what this does for us when we run this okay so there are team names we've got some order right everyone's uh, standing at attention let's play around let's let's move this to 60 and uh, right I kind of like that a little better a little, well uh, I think it's a little bit more stylish so we'll keep that angle uh, going there so now let's do some basic stuff let's set a title and then let's put a, um, a, a label on the y-axis right so fairly simple here let's do this we're gonna do ax dot set title and we'll say number of blocks number of blocks by NBA team uh, 2018 2019 obviously you can put whatever title you want but we're gonna use that and let's make that font size uh, fairly big right now if we do a PLT show here right number of blocks by NBA team you see what that does and so now we can just do a ax dot set Y label um, number of well let's do a space number of blocks right fairly simple let's do that and there we go we've got that number of uh, blocks and so what you can do uh, one of the cool things about matplotlib let's take a look at these style sheets right so there are these default style sheets uh, within matplotlib you can see the uh, the link here and you can use these to uh, to uh, influence your uh, your visualization so we're going to pick uh, you know I'll show you let's just play around with some I like uh, grayscale 
and I think I, I passed it. So we're going to use uh, grayscale. There it is, grayscale. And then just to show you uh, how things can change, dark background. So let's let's play around with that. So um, uh, to do that, let's do a. Now, in order for me to get this right, I'm going to create a uh, a new cell here. So we're going to go into command mode here. I'm going to B, and that gives us a new cell. And so. First, I'm going to, you know, what I find works, I have to let's see, use this rcparams.update, plt.rc, params, default. Let's do that, and then I'm going to say plt.style.use. And uh, what did we say? Uh, let's let's start with um, what was it? Uh, let's go back. Dark background. Dark underscore background. So let's uh, try that. Dark underscore background. So what's going on here with this guy is, um, you know, we're going to reset all styles to the default uh, style here. So each time matplotlib loads, it defines a uh, runtime configuration. That's what that RC uh, stands for. And so you can you can edit um, what that runtime configuration is. I find if you don't use this and just use plt style dot use, um, it, you won't, um, your viz won't uh, update. So it's, it's kind of like you're setting it to default and then using the style here. So I'm going to I'm going to run that, and then if we go back up here, let's see what happens. See, now we get this uh, this dark background style here, right? Love it or hate it, and you can you can tweak these if you want. And so I'm also going to what do we say? We're going to use grayscale. So hopefully I spell that right. Uh, grayscale. Let's try that. And now when I go up here and uh, run, there we go. We have our number of blocks by uh, NBA team. Um, nice and big here. So what if we want to save this, right? I haven't shown you how to do that yet. So let's use this uh, command to uh, tighten up our, um, our figure size to fit our one subplot. So before we, um, before we show, let's go ahead and use this command, plt dot save fig, right? And then we just uh, give it a file name, NBA blocks.jpg, right? And then we're gonna use this uh, command here, bbox inches equal tight. And so again, what that does is um, it makes sure it adjusts the uh, figure size to fit our, our one subplot. So now if we were to give this, let's give this a run, right? Now if I were to go to my operating system here, Oh, I don't have uh, NBA Blocks uh, 2 because I named it uh, NBA Blocks. I want to name it NBA Blocks 2 just to show you that I'm not uh, uh, using the same uh, file. So now if I go here, there we go, NBA Blocks 2, which I just created. And if we open that up, you'll see there is our visualization. So this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip in Python, right? So you learned to read a CSV in the pandas data frame object. You created a bar chart plot, and then you saved the plot as a file. So uh, this has been Anthony Smoke. Take this tip. Get out there and do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching. Thank you.